Hello everyone, Lord of Flames here, and I got nothing to do now for my next video, and decided to just do a thoughts or a review for this movie called Shin Godzilla, in which it releases in 2016, on October 11. And right now, I just watched it like a week ago, and I decided to just think about just making a video about it. I know I'm very, very much late to make a video about it since there are a lot of reviews already. This movie is somehow different from the rest. I mean, it's similar to 1954 Godzilla to bring it back to being the horror type genre of Godzilla because like how it used to be where in human only focusing on humans the most while Godzilla just explored, just roaming around your city or not destroying. But this movie is some similar to it, but into a different direction. They decide to uh, have it not just an ancient creature just waking up out to your own planet or whatnot. It's rather an idea having these uh, radiations just left under the, the ocean, and it was all sucked in by this ran these random fish creatures. Only one, somehow the radiation or whatever it is, affects the body and transform itself into a large creature known as Godzilla, which is somehow interesting. Whatever those radiators are did something a lot for, for this one creature to become Godzilla. And all those radiations comes for that creature and it gives out the atomic breath. The plot of it was very very simple and the story ended there so good. Like always, they defeat Godzilla or Shin Godzilla. Uh, but the ending was kind of twisted, which is close, which might be getting itself a sequel, which I hope. Because you cannot just just sit there just doing nothing if you want to bring the horror Godzilla back. Because the tale is showing uh, human versions of Godzilla, but into much more creepier way. Because I did look online on Google Image to see what they fully look like. And there are skulls or similar to us, but much creepier with no eyes, holes, or not. They have this strange looking line thing with a circle or something. I don't know, but they do look creepy. But how does Godzilla d did that for some reason? Like, create the human humanoid version of him. Or it. So, I think, I mean, we already know. Because there was that boat during the beginning of the movie, which... There is a guy whose name is Goro Maki, who is the one Japan professor who went missing all of a sudden. And his boat was only found with no damage or nothing. It just felt, looked normal, which means, I don't know, he probably jumped in on the water and no, for some reason, his DNA or his whole body was formed with this creature to both of them becoming a Godzilla. And that's why the tail is showing the skeletal head of Goromaki for what's left of him. Yeah, that would be twisted if the movie actually did show that idea without just being so blurry or not showing the whole tail head or not. Because imagine that movie did show a terrifying scene for all the audience or the characters in the movie to just shock and fear to see what happened when they notice of what happened to Goromaki for see what he become now. Because you will see like the skull of it. Because I think that's why those humanoid creatures in the ending are somehow the DNA or whatever you call it. That's somehow similar to Goromaki, which part of his gene or DNA mixed with the other creature for the Godzilla and create these abominations. In which they uh, didn't appear around the much movie on the ending, which they only just stopped moving or something. Maybe because, well, I mean, it's not. Because they started to move slowly, I think. Because it didn't happen towards the other parts of the final battle part. We didn't see them coming out because this happened in a different timeline. Whatever it is, probably a year or a month or so. Or probably a week. I was terrified to see that. I really am. I mean, everybody is when they saw this idea for what they just decided to make. And I noticed a little bit, a few concept arts for it, maybe it's all of it on Google Image. And the artist for this concept art is really talented. 
not because it looks, but showing what it looks like for every stages or different form that Godzilla or Shin Godzilla would look like for what it might take to, to involve. Make a clone of him or Godzilla forming out of the body or um, having multiple of him or having these random humanoid creatures to show up a little bit more around the movie or a sequel for what happens if they did it Gen Godzilla didn't froze these beings wherever they are will um explore around the cities and kill you kind of terrified um so it's mostly because the radiation whatever it is somehow did this whole thing not because that poor little creature who somehow became a Godzilla it's all because of us the humanity all because of doing the stupid war stuff that somehow create these random weapons are becoming too dangerous and let for, for banded. But some of these radiations that Japan drop underwater, which are so many of them down there, are somehow still there, which they still affect a few creatures who somehow become these big abomination creatures. Are becoming, are mostly tortured, suffer for all that. Even like how during the begin, during the part when we get to see Godzilla in this movie with his second form which it's mostly start to uh, grow his body because it's poor little creature whatever it is it's kind of uh, feel sad for it because you see how much of the blood's coming out of it how much damage it got the wounds and second form when it needs to get back to the ocean because the heat's coming out of it part of the atomic breath or whatever you call it and third form which is fine but Still, still a little bit damaged when when that part of that scene where the free Americans use their own like free jets to uh, launch missiles in the back somehow it works, but until it didn't, and it could use its beams on the back. I was like, what? Since when they do that? The city was so destroyed by Godzilla, and it was a talented scene they just did for the whole scene. Even the music of Who Will Know. That music was a masterpiece. Because it did sound like a tragedy type of soundtrack. With the same thing for Goromaki and its poor little creature as Godzilla. Which is a tragedy story. Sometimes for humans and sometimes for these cre little, this little creature as Godzilla and Goromaki. Which all because of us. Humans. So that's why this movie became so interesting. Not just focusing on random things about ancient creatures coming out of nowhere and fighting around in our own planet. That sort of thing. They're, if they're planning on a sequel, I can't wait. Because we need to get to that good horror stuff again. For Godzilla, since the first movie in 1954 came out. Because there is one video which is so interesting. It's a creepypasta type story for the sequel of Chin Godzilla what it's like if those humanoid creatures just show up in your city. You may understand. It's kind of creepy. I watched one video that's somehow very interesting and shocked my core. And I listened to it at 12. 12 a.m. while staying up late. <laughs> yeah, how stupid of me to watch listen things at late night times. Anyways, that's all I gotta say. I mean, Shin Godzilla was a good movie. I gotta give out 10 out of 10. Cause somehow give that good vibe for Godzilla to be scary back again. That's why this movie, the director, brought it back to be how it is. Well, folks, there's a Lord of Flames here. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, folks. Have a wonderful day. Thank <laughs> you.